Hi everybody. I would like to welcome you to uh, my uh, design class. Uh, this class is uh, dedicated to giving knowledge and information on the mechanical design process from a material standpoint where we will understand material failure and how failure of materials impact the mechanical design and how to change the design configuration so that we can utilize materials the best way we can. My name is Nas Konim and I'm a professor in the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department at UCLA and I'm very happy to be your instructor for this course. I have taught this course for uh, maybe 15 to 16 years at UCLA, uh, both as a regular uh, course for the Masters and PhD program and also for the online program that uh, we have here. In the last few years, I have uh, done extensive changes in the content of the course to make it more practical and to give you uh, additional tools that you can use uh, to further your career as a mechanical engineering designer. So today I'm going to give you just an introductory lecture, introductory lecture uh, that will uh, outline what will be covered in the course and give you information on the overall contents that uh, we will uh, pursue uh, during uh, these lectures. So if you look uh, at uh, the screen here uh, with me, you'll see that uh, I'm defining, let's say, the design process. It is uh, essentially to formulate a plan uh, that will satisfy a given uh, specified need. Uh, so as an engineer, uh, you have uh, a need to meet in terms of uh, reaching certain uh, uh, objectives, either uh, you're designing for certain pressures, for temperatures, for functionality, for uh, performance, and so forth. Then you set the need, uh, the need and then you uh, formulate a plan to satisfy these needs. Um, and of course, this would require uh, quite a bit of uh, innovation. Um, then you reach uh, your goals uh, directly, but you're not satisfied. So you will have to do iterations and then you are faced with different decisions to uh, make uh, changes in uh, the original plan. Uh, and once we reach these decisions, of course, we will have to uh, be able to communicate that in the form of a written report, a written reports, and sometimes uh, give presentations to the public uh, as designers uh, uh, on the uh, overall objectives of the design or the, or the uh, contents of the design itself. And uh, as you know, uh, many of us uh, love mechanical engineering because it's very versatile. It uh, involves many different disciplines. It has applications of uh, aspects of science and physics, mathematics that we've studied, but in a fun way that it can be applied to uh, practical aspects of everyday life. Uh, so that we can improve the lives of people uh, using mechanical design. So it involves uh, subjects, uh, uh, mechanical engineering, like uh, designing uh, journal bearings, uh, designing uh, springs, uh, designing uh, automotive parts, designing brakes, designing uh, heat transfer, heat exchangers, uh, very, very wide range of possibilities once we learn uh, the techniques of design. And um, what I'm hoping is to teach you um, some very important techniques of design that will basically focus on uh, strength of materials, uh, lifetime of materials, material selection, and implementation in particular design. So if we have a design process, we would have to uh, analyze, first is identify the need uh, for the design and uh, define the uh, problem. And uh, once we define the problem, uh, then we can actually uh, iterate on the problem. Uh, so we have to define it here. And then 
uh, we after after we define it we do a synthesis and the synthesis process is uh, like solving equations uh, making a MATLAB code um, and uh, breaking it down into different components and uh, then the synthesis is followed by uh, a stage of uh, detailed analysis and optimization and the stage of uh, analysis and optimization uh, we uh, have tools to achieve that and the tools that we have for design uh, in this course we would have three kinds of tools as you can see here we have um, CAD tools so we would we would like you to learn uh, more I'm sure that a lot of you know about that already but would like you to learn more about SolidWorks and how to use it in the design uh, imp implementation of a project and uh, also for the analysis we will use the finite element uh, method because it is the most uh, prevalent in industrial applications and it's also used in uh, research uh, settings uh, there are many uh, finite element codes that are available in the literature but here we will use uh, the console uh, code that we will apply uh, reason is the console is uh, becoming very popular and um, it allows us to also use multi-physics so it can solve for mechanics problems plus thermal problems plus uh, diffusion problems plus electrical problems all of these can be solved together in console so it's a good opportunity for you to learn how to use it and uh, also we have uh, many equations that we will use in the design process so we need a method to do the calculations uh, very easily and the method is uh, MATLAB so we will have uh, to rely on programming uh, techniques in MATLAB and um, I will uh, try to uh, show you some aspects of programming when necessary but I think many of you already have a background in uh, using MATLAB. So these are the things that we will learn uh, in the course. And uh, in addition to that, we will learn how to use uh, handbooks and uh, design uh, standards and uh, design uh, codes and how we can utilize the standards in meeting the prescriptions in design codes. So in, uh, when we look at resources for design, you will see that you get, have a bunch of handbooks. You can also go to the US Patent Office um, website to look at similar designs uh, the National Institute of Science and Technology, they have a lot of information. Uh, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME, and the Society of Automotive Engineers. And uh, these resources are available on the internet. For example, if you go to this website, this is www.globalspec.com, you'll see a lot of uh, information on the design specs for mechanical engineers. There are other websites, um, for example, ENG and Net, uh, Net Global, and uh, that is for engineering specifications, and also uh, the US Patent Office website, USPTO.gov. They all are very useful, very helpful. Uh, resources to us. So now let me talk about the designer and that is yourself. So the designer uh, is uh, uh, supposed to be uh, very uh, very um, uh, focused on achieving responsibilities and therefore 
the designer has specific characteristics. Uh, we have to be responsible at this, as designers. Otherwise, if we are not responsible for our design, it can lead to a harm of the public in a, in a large and important way. We have to be ethical. So we do not uh, cheat. We do not plagiarize. And uh, we give the public the best uh, help that we can get uh, from our profession. So we have to be current in our knowledge. We have to always learn new techniques, new processes. We have to be able to communicate to the public by writing and by oral communications. And um, we have to follow the ethics of uh, the ethics code. And that you can find, for example, in the National Society of Professional Engineers, NSPE, Code of Ethics. And I'm going just to read it for you here. Um, that uh, the Code of Essex, Ethics um, is uh, a set of rules to, for our, all of us to follow so that we can um, produce results that are useful to the development of our society. So we have to, number one, follow safety rules. Number two, offer our uh, services only in our areas of expertise, not in other areas. We have to be objective when we give public statements, not to falsify or to uh, exaggerate. We have to serve our client faithfully. So if we are given uh, a design uh, uh, job or a consulting uh, process, we have to be faithful to whoever gave us this process. And then we have to be, of course, non-deceptive and honorable to the public. Now we uh, look at uh, what we mean by standards and by, by codes. Uh, a standard is a set of spec specifications uh, that are designed so that they can give us uniformity in uh, the design and manufacturing process so we can limit the variations. So if I have a standard, for example, the ISO 9000 standard uh, is a standard that's applied when you follow the standard in manufacturing a small product or even a large one, uh, it will be acceptable in the US and acceptable in other countries uh, within certain tolerances that are defined by the standard, within uh, certain composition variations of the material, within a certain uh, range of variations in the manufacturing process that created that product. So in making sure that the product follows the ISO 9000 standard, uh, whether you use it in the US or you use it in China or use it in Japan or Europe, uh, the product will function uh, pretty much the same. So that's is the idea of the standard. Now, in contrast to the standard, we uh, talk about the code. And the design code is, again, a set of specifications, but they have a different objective. The specifications are there to, uh, so that when we do the analysis and the design, we uh, conform to this set of standards. And if we conform to these sets of standards, for example, uh, we should not exceed uh, the yield strength uh, divided by 1.5. That's a standard, for example. That's a, co it's a code specification. If we design to this, then we will achieve safety, we will achieve perf high performance, and so on. So the standard uh, is for manufacturing mainly, and the code is for the design process itself, so that when the design uh, product uh, will function in a safe and economical uh, fashion. 
And uh, if you look at the 